Good day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to our class on swing trading and let me just start off telling you this is a new class and I've taken down the old class that had the audio problems so if you're listening now this class is perfectly fine sorry for the inconvenience to anybody who had no audio in the last version so I would appreciate it greatly if you could click on the bell icon down below and that way you'll just be notified whenever I upload new classes. And if you click on the subscribe button, you'll be able to get all of my channels and all of my stations, and you'll know exactly what's going on in all of our classes. Thank you very much in advance, and please do subscribe. I appreciate it. So today we're going to be talking about the concepts of swing trading. Now, Wikipedia describes swing trading as a speculative trading activity in any financial market whereby instruments such as currencies are bought and sold at or near the end of an upswing or near the end of a down swing. Now, a lot of us mix up the terms day trader and swing trader. Day traders by definition, and remember in the 1990s, we had all of these God knows things, promotional things, showing people laying on the beach, making a fortune, doing their little day trading. Believe me, that's a bunch of bull. Day trading can be profitable, but it's a highly intensive, focus-driven type of trading. Because the simple name of day trading means your trades close within the same day you open them. So therefore, you have to reach certain goals and objectives in a very, very short period of time. And a day trader is looking to make short term profits or very, very quick profits and very short moves in the volatility of a, you know, within one day. Now, CFDs have made a big, big change to this. And for you, to, for you who don't know what CFDs are, they're contracts for difference. Unfortunately, in the U.S., CFDs are not a, an available product. They will be sooner or later, but they're not available. Throughout Europe and Asia, they are regulated product, products available by all regulated brokers. In the U.S., a day trader is, like I said, by definition, a has to keep all of his trades closed at the end of the day. But also, a day trader must register with the broker as a day trader. And he has certain rules and regulations that are placed upon him, whether it's capitalization, whether it's leverage, whether it's margin. A lot of things are placed on him at, when he declares himself a day trader. Now, opposed to day traders, we have swing traders. And honestly, that's what most of us are. Okay. Because most of us that are here listening to class will have the advantage of trading CFDs. Or you could swing, you can swing trade stocks through the regular stock market because a swing trade takes anywhere from several days, several weeks to several months, depending on the type of trader you are. Now, most of my trades close within five days to seven days, maybe 10 days. But I don't have to declare anything. Now, like I said, CFDs have made this a whole world of difference. Because a CFD, even though it was devised for mostly trading within the same day, not a day trader, but trading within the same day, because most CFD trades are closed in the same day they're open. But a CFD can be kept open for as long as you'd like to keep it open. So this has changed the, the clear cut definitions we had not so long ago. So most of us will be trading CFDs. Very few of us will be declared day traders. Now, swing trading is different from day trading because when swing traders trade, they leave their trades running for more than one day to even a month or more. So swing trading is a short to intermediate term trend following trading technique. Generally, swing traders look for minor trend reversals to enter in the direction of the trend. And for example, if a main uptrend, an asset's trading up, say Google's going up steadily, or like the markets are recovering right now from, we're still in the middle of Corona, but it seems like 
the world's getting a handle on a lot of it. So the stock market is climbing. So when you see a stock climbing steadily upward, you don't want to buy it when it is towards the top of its price. You're going to wait till it eases back down and then buy it and ride it again, ride it up to the top. Because a swing trader, as well as all good traders, know that stocks or any asset doesn't move straight up. They move and push and ease, push and ease, push and ease. And so what you're looking is to is to buy or sell on the ease. Now, what you're looking for in swing trading is a nicely developed uptrend or something that's going to make an asset steadily going up. You know, for, hypothetically, if Walmart re releases their earnings and their store same store sales and their online sales and their profit margin, everything looks good. You know, first of all, what we're going to see is we're going to see probably a big surge at the moment. But that's a high risk trade because the release of the data will cause some market volatility. But if the markets were already expecting good numbers from Walmart, okay, we may not get a, a tradable scenario. But we know as a swing trader that these good numbers should cause Walmart to steadily, slowly increase in value over the next week, the next 10 days, you know, between now and the next earnings period. So if we see Walmart trading at, and again, I have no idea where Walmart's trading, at 140, and we see it go, you know, the good earnings comes out, we see it jump to 143, and then, you know, later the day, the next day, it eases back down to 140, 139, 141, because what happens is buyers get tired. They get exhausted. It doesn't mean it's going to come down. It just takes a lot of effort to keep pushing something up. But it's like the wheel. Once you get turning, it, it turns easy. But there's stumbling blocks. There's a certain time where buyers might have bought before the the release of the earnings report, expecting it to go up. And they had said, okay, I got in at 138. I want to make my $5, so I'm going to sell at 143. And they put all of this in their setups or their, their assets. And when Walmart hit 143, it triggered their sell. They got close their position. They took their profit. They were very happy. They ran away with, you know, 50,000 bucks if they had 10,000 shares. Okay. And they were quite happy. And this is what causes that ease. Because then you also have the other buyers who were buying, 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 buying. And say, ah, 143 is a wee bit high. I see some people selling at 143. Let's see if it, you know, let's let it ease back down before I get in the market. So you have one group of buyers that moved to the sideline, another group of buyers that left the market because they took their profit. And this is what causes this retracement or this ease. Okay. A swing trader looks to capitalize it. He wants, he's not going to buy at the very bottom because nobody can predict the falling knife. But when it falls back down and then starts to turn around and move back up from its retracement, that's when a swing trader would be. And he would want to stay in the market as it moved to 140, back from 141, it went to 142, 143, 144, 145, but he's continually moving his stop loss up. And even if it falls down, back down to 144, he's sitting there to ride it for the next week to 10 days. He doesn't have to sell it. Now, there's a lot of advantage to swing trading. It's easy to manage and take profits and stop losses because they actually place your stop loss a bit farther away from the market price to avoid getting stopped out prematurely. You can set lower risk to reward ratios because you have less risk because you're looking at a slower paced thing market. So you're, you're looking for, you can set a lower risk reward ratio because your risk is lower. Swing trading is much easier to learn and do than day trading. Because remember day trading, you've got high pressure on you. Okay. Trading transaction costs due to spreads are much lower than day trading. And you have a lot more time to analyze trades and take the trades and therefore swing trades can suit someone who has a day job. Swing trading does not take a lot of your time. You can place your trades and walk away instead of babysitting your 
trade like in day trading. Day trading, you are glued to your computer. Even though you put your stop losses and make profits, second momentary volatility can cause you to get stopped out. A, a craziness in the market could push it well all the way up to your target level and close out your trade with profit. But you could have looked at it and stayed, oh, I could have stayed in longer. Day trading is a lot less intense. You still have risk. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying you don't have risk. Now, I prefer day trading. And there are times I will day trade, but I like to look at the big picture. And for me, swing trading is ideal for that. I'd rather make 100 pips to 200 pips profit per trade than 10 pips per trade. Okay. And in day trading, you're looking to make 10 trades at 10 pips or 20 pips a piece. Okay. Well, that's 20 different risk and 20 different stress points. I would rather take a solid stock like Walmart, even the US dollar. Look, as the government recovers, as the economy starts to recover, as we get out of this mess, as jobs start to come back and unemployment rates start to fall, the value of the dollar is going to go up. Okay, So I would rather buy the dollar at a low point, but not that I'm going to have to sell it in an hour from now and I hope it's going to jump up in an hour. No, I can say over the next 60 days, as the economy starts to show recovering and unemployment goes down, the dollar will go up in value and that's when I'll sell my dollar index. So that's what I like. For you, you may like day trading. It's completely up to different personalities. So it's really a question you have to decide. But the advantage if, when you're trading CFDs is you can close a trade in a couple hours or you can keep it going. But day trading requires a huge time commitment, much more so than swing trading. Swing trading uses time frames that are much longer. You generally hold for your security for several days or weeks. You still have to make sure that you're in a favorable position, but you have some breathing room. It's entirely possible to profit from swing trading on a part-time basis. A swing trader depends on three emotions, and this is what controls the market. Everybody knows what they are. Do you know what they are? Greed, fear, and what? What's the third one? Anybody out there know it? Greed, fear, and uncertainty. These emotions cause virtually all of the short-term price aberrations that make swing trading a profitable trading strategy. Swing traders try to ignore the tendency to react emotionally to price movements, such as such using logic to take advantage of market overreactions. So let's start out with a simple set of rules here. When you're swing trading, you're always going with the trend. You're always looking for something to be moving in a nice uptrend or downtrend. Forget sideways mess, forget congestion mess. You're looking for something, an asset that is moving in an uptrend or a downtrend. Over a longer, you know, you can see the euro US dollar trading in a short term uptrend has only been over the last 12 hours. You're not concerned with that. You're looking for an intermediate uptrend. They're looking at the euro US dollar saying for the last week and a half or two weeks, it's been steadily getting better. It's been steadily moving up. Okay, that's a lot easier than seeing a whole bunch of little tiny short term uptrends and downtrends. But you always trade in the direction of the trend. And you're always, the more well developed the trend, the more well-developed the eases will be, the peaks in the mountains. Okay. Now, these are not peaks and mountains, troughs and valleys, are not technical terms, but they're easy terms for you to understand. Push and ease, push and ease. We say that when an asset's moving up, it's making higher highs, then higher lows, then higher highs and higher lows. So in other words, as it's moving up, it's making a higher price. Then it's going to ease back down, but that low that it eases down to is going to be higher than the last low where it was before. It's going to push back up and make a higher high. That high is going to be higher than the highest point of the previous move. It's going to ease back down, and the new low it forms will be higher than that previous low. And we don't want to trade dead markets. We don't want to trade markets that have no reason to move. We don't want to trade sideways congestion. And remember, we can trade both sides of the markets. And statistically, a market will drop three times faster than it will rise. It's a lot easier 
for a stock or a commodity or a currency to fall. It still takes a lot of bulls or bears to push in either direction. But if you were pushing a rock up, a, a, a boulder up a mountain, it takes a lot of work. But once you get it rolling, it can keep on going. But which is easier when you get to the top of the mountain to let it roll down? It's going to go down a lot faster. So when I began trading, I was following many stocks who were part of the same industry group. Okay, that's one of the biggest mistakes a lot of swing traders make. And we are all mainly following tech stocks. No one ever told me that these stocks have a correlation to the market of about 70 to 80% to each other. In other words, if Facebook's going up, so is WhatsApp, so, is, so are all the other social platforms. Now, an individual stock could be going up faster or slower, but if the whole entire market is moving up and you see your asset in an upcline, but it's not moving faster than the market, that's a hard trade to make and you shouldn't be taking five different stocks that are just moving with the market. But when you see the whole sector moving up, you can easily take a couple different parts of that sector because if Google, Microsoft, and, and Facebook are all moving up because tech stocks are doing real well, well, hey, that's telling you maybe I should be over there. Same holds true with commodities and Forex. You know, if the commodities market is doing extremely well, a sector, if natural, if not, if, if crude oil is doing well, most likely so is natural gas. So is Brent oil at the same time. If corn's doing well, cotton's doing well, coffee's all doing well. Okay. Now, yes, you could have a problem with a coffee harvest, or you could have a problem with the orange juice crop because of a strike in Brazil or because there's a hurricane coming in Florida. But the overall whole sector of food or agriculture is climbing. That's going to help all of your, your, your parts of that, in, that sector. So keep in mind, trading highly correlated assets is the same as doubling your position. Now, that's what you have to keep in mind. If the whole sector is going up and you're a Facebook, what's up, you know, social media, you know, LinkedIn trader, well, each position you open is like just doubling or tripling your position overall of all of those assets. So maybe what you should do is figure out, okay, the sector's doing well, but Facebook is outperforming the other two in the sector. So maybe I'll just open my position in Facebook and not double my position size, but add one and a half times to it and not be so spread out. But remember, correlation does play a lot of stuff. So what are the components of the swing trade? First is the selection. Then is the trade setup. Then is the entry point. Then is where you put your stop loss, your exits and your trailing stops, and your position sizing. Now, please, again, I'm going to remind you to subscribe. It's important that you do. But let's say hypothetically, there's a hypothetical stock. And the highest it's been is 49.50. Okay, not last week, last month, over its, its lifetime, the highest has been is 49.50. It tends to stay oh, around $45. It drops to, you know, to $39 now and then. Well, if it drops to $39, you could nicely buy that stock because you know eventually it's going to fluctuate back up to that somewhere near that $49.50. It may not get the $49, it may not get $48, but it's going to go back up. And then when it gets there, it's most likely going to fall off. For the, now, it can go right through. If you were in a long position, you were great. But if you see it getting near $49.50 and it turns backwards, it starts coming down. You could easily sell and just wait for it to come back down. It may not come down to 39.50 again, but you know a key is that 43 where it normally sits. So you can trade it up and you can trade it down because you're in no rush for it to get to either place. But by being aware of who's in control of the market and where the money is, you can make smart trading decisions and you can use technical analysis, but you don't have to get involved in very intricate technical analysis because you're not looking for indicators to tell you get in here in five minutes and get out here in an hour. But a simple swing trading plan is easy to develop, easy to learn, and in no time at all, you could be mastering. Now, here's what I was explaining to you about push and ease, push and ease, push and ease. So we have swing highs and swing lows. And as this stock is moving up, 
making a beautiful uptrend, we would want to enter each time it may came down and made that new swing low and let it ride up until it makes the, you know, that point. But again, it's easy to get these entry points. You're not going to look to enter at the very bottom. Okay, like I said, that's catching a knife. You're looking for it to hit that bottom because you don't know where it's going to be and then turn around and move back up to continue its trend. Once it's turned around and moved back up to continue that trend, not that it's reached where it was before, you want to enter the market. But you do need a plan. Okay, and once you have your plan, it's ready to get started. And you're ready to get started. So swing trading or trading CFDs in a swing trading fashion is a lot easier way to enter the markets. So thank you very much for joining us. Again, please subscribe and have a great trading day.